Centering a title over a cell range. In this particular case, we've got years 2003, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So I could click on cell C2 here and type in something like sales year. And if I just click underneath, as you can see, we've got the word sales year here, but we want the word sales year to apply to all these other years here. So what I can do is I can click on the cell C2 here and drag along so that basically the range is selected from cell C2 to G2. Once that's been done, I can click on where it says merge and center. And if I click outside this, notice what's happened here. These cells here are what used to be individual cells. So cell C2, D2, E2, F2, G2, etc. have all been merged now to a single cell called G2. And the header here is basically centered within those. So let me just undo that and let's see what see that again. At the moment we've got cells C2, D2, E2, F2, and G2. If I select that range there, and then simply click on where it says merge and center, and then just click outside. As you can see, if you click within the cell C2, the cell C2 now extends across here, and basically the contents, or the former contents, have been merged, and basically centered across the top there. So that's basically how you can merge and center a heading for your column rows. Cell orientation. If we select a range of cells here, and under the Home tab in the Alignment group here, if you click on this option here, which is Orientation, if you click on the down arrow next to it, you'll find there's various options. So for instance, you can angle the text counterclockwise, like so. And if you keep clicking on that, it'll scroll around the various options. Or you can go in the reverse action, um, direction, which is angle clockwise, like so. There's various other options here. So you can have vertical text, which looks like that, so the numbers are stacked on top of each other. You've got rotate text up, like so, or rotate text down, like so. So as you've seen, basically there's various orientation options you can select from. Text wrapping within a cell. Here we have a, a typical table, and if I just click here, I can type in something like all profits are pre-tax values. Now at the moment, as you can see, if we click on cell B14, the contents of that exceeds the size of the cell. So what I can do is I can click on where it says wrap text, and if I click here, look what happens. The text wraps around within the cell width. If I click on that, it undoes it. Let's make this uh, slightly smaller. Right, so you can see it again. Wrap text without the wrap text, with, without. So if you want to wrap the text within a particular cell, just click on uh, this item here, making sure, of course, the, uh, the cell is already pre-selected. Simple as that. Aligning cell contents vertically. Here we have some data, and as you can see, we've got fairly wide rows here. So if we select the data there. If you look at the alignment options here, there's various options we've got here. We've got align top, which looks like that. Align middle, or middle align, which looks like that. And we've got align to the bottom, which looks like that. So if we go for the middle one there, and then just deselect that, as you can see, in terms of vertical alignment, it's all been aligned within the, the middle vertically. If you want to, you could combine that with this option here, which is center uh, horizontally. So now if you look at each value, they've been aligned vertically and horizontally relative to each cell. Using the Format Painter. Here we have some data. There's not much bit formatting being applied to it. So what we can do is we can apply some uh, additional formatting. You can do anything you want. So we'll just take some options at random here. So we'll try a different size font, we'll try a different type of font, we'll try um, a different color for the font, 
maybe a different background. So we'll try um, a light blue background and we'll put an outside thick border on as well. So basically we've got formatting that's been applied there to this, this text here. Now if I um, select all or part of that uh, text there, I can then click on the Format Painter. So I click on the Format Painter once and move down. Notice there's a paintbrush that's been attached to the pointer here. Can you see that? And if I click and drag across some target text, when I let go of the mouse button, can you see what happens? The formatting from up here has been applied down here. Let me click the undo button a few times so we can repeat all that. So what I'll do is I'll just simply copy this. So I've got uh, two sets of data here. The first set of data, I'll just apply some formatting information. So I'll make it bright red with a yellow background. I'll make the size larger. I'll use uh, this font here and I'll apply italic formatting. So as you can see, that formatting has been applied here. It hasn't been applied here. I can click in any item here that's been uh, formatted in that way. I can click on the Format Painter, go down here, and if I just want to drag that uh, or apply it to maybe this first column here, I could just drag across the first column, and as you can see, the text has been applied here. Incidentally, if I undo that for a second, if I go back here, select some formatted text, and this time if I double click on the Format Painter, you'll find that even though I'm not pressing down on the mouse button or anything, the, um, the paintbrush remains attached to the pointer. So if I drag across the first column here and then move someplace else, you'll notice it's still active. So that's the difference between a single and a double click on Format Painter. If you do a single click, you've got one application, then it defaults back to uh, the pointer, just defaults back to where it was. If you do a double click, basically, it turns the mouse pointer into a permanent painter until you press the escape button to turn the effect off. So if I drag down here and let go of the mouse button, you can see it applies. If I click, drag and let go of the mouse button, again, it keeps applying. And if I click, say, just on this cell, this cell, this cell, this cell, and this cell, as you can see, it keeps applying it. If I press the escape key, look what happens to the pointer it diverts back to the default original. So I'd say that's a useful tip to remember that if you've got multiple instances where you want to take formatting and apply it to someplace else, if you double click on this item here instead of a single click, then it turns it on and it stays on until you press the escape key to turn it off again. So that's basically how you use the Format Painter.